Welcome to the Armstrong Do-It-Yourself Center. So, you've decided to buy an Armstrong hardwood floor. It's a serious investment and one that will add beauty and value to your home. And you're also going to install it yourself, right? Well, in this video series, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about installing an Armstrong hardwood floor. And when you're finished, you'll be able to tell everyone, I did it myself. This first video segment is divided into two sections, estimating and subfloor preparation. We'll tackle estimating first. You'll need some tools, an approved dust mask and safety glasses. If you plan to use power tools, you should also have hearing protection, tape measure, pencil and paper, a claw hammer, work gloves, sharp utility knife, pliers, a pry bar, an undercut saw, either powered or manual, wood chisels, broom, dust pan and brush, a vacuum, and a putty knife or scraper. Grab your tape measure and a pencil and paper. You're going to be writing down some numbers. To know how much flooring to buy, you need to know the total area of the room. Measure the length and width of your room in inches. Make sure to measure all four walls. Not all rooms are square. Then, take the longest length and width measurements and multiply them. You'll get a total that's in square inches. Now, since Armstrong sells flooring planks by square feet, not inches, you need to divide that square inches total by 144. That'll give you the square feet. If you've got a closet to deal with, or if your room is not a simple rectangle, you'll need to do more measuring. First, divide the room into rectangles. Then, determine the square footage of each rectangle and add those together. This is a lot easier if you draw a diagram of the room on paper. Once you have the total, add 5% to this number for cutting allowance. If you're doing a customized installation, like installing the floor 45 degrees to the wall, add 10% for cutting allowance. Speaking of customized installations, unless you have a lot of experience installing floors, we recommend that you leave customized techniques, like borders, to the professionals. One last thing to do in the estimating phase, you need to decide the direction you want your floor planks to go. We recommend installing your planks perpendicular to the floor joists. Okay, now that you have your measurements and your installation layout decided, you can go buy the flooring. When you get it home, make sure you store it out of the elements. The best place to store your flooring is in the room where you're going to install it. The next best place is in an area that has the same temperature conditions as that room. Now, it's time to get the subfloor ready. For this demonstration, we'll show you how to prepare a carpeted, suspended wood floor. If you don't have this type of subfloor, don't worry. You can still use the subfloor preparation steps we'll tell you about with a few modifications. First step, get your utility knife. Removing the carpet and pad is more involved than you might think. To make it easier, you're going to cut the carpet into three to four foot strips. Once that's up, do the same thing with the carpet pad. Since the pad is stapled, it won't come up in nice even strips, but we're not going for pretty here. Cut the strips as best you can. Next, you'll need your pliers to remove all the pad staples. The last thing to come up is the tack strip. Use your work gloves. The tack strips are sharp. Make sure you pull up all the nails that were holding the tack strip down. Checking the moisture in the room where you're going to install the hardwood floor is an important part of the pre-installation process. All subfloors should be tested for moisture and the results documented. Don't trust visual checks. They're not reliable. There are three main moisture tests we recommend. A 3% phenolphthalein in anhydrous alcohol solution, Tramex concrete moisture and counter meter, and a polyfilm test. Details of these tests can be found on our website, armstrong.com. The next part of the subfloor preparation involves removing the trim. Some trim is installed with a gap to allow for the installation of carpet. That gap might be high enough for your floor installation. 
The way to know for sure is to slide a piece of wood that you're planning to install under the trim board to see if it fits easily. If it does, you can leave the trim alone. If it doesn't, you have two options. The first option is to undercut the trim using a power undercut saw. You'll probably have to rent the saw. This method allows you to cut away some of the trim without removing it. Then you could install a quarter round molding to cover your expansion space. The other option is to remove the trim. To remove the trim, you'll need your utility knife again and your pry bar. Start by making a cut at the top of the trim board or molding. Then, using your pry bar, gently pull the trim away from the wall. If you're reusing the trim, take a moment to write the locations that the pieces came from on the back. This will save you a lot of time when you go to reinstall them. Door jams are another area where you'll have to do some undercutting. Most door jams go all the way to the floor, so you'll have to undercut them so the wood will fit under. You can use either a power undercut saw or a manual jam saw. First, take a piece of the flooring you'll be installing and turn it face down next to the door jam. This will give you the proper height and a stable platform for the jam saw. By turning the wood over, you can save the face and still use it for your installation. One thing before you get your saw out, if you're installing a floating hardwood floor, make sure to put a piece of underlayment under the flooring. This will give you the proper height of your door undercut. Now, get your saw and start cutting. You may need wood chisels to remove some of the wood. When you're finished, clean up all the dust, wood chips, and other debris from the floor. The last step in subfloor preparation is to level your subfloor. Your subfloor has to be level so the boards will go together well, and a level subfloor will reduce squeaks and hollow sounds. You may need to stiffen your subfloor to prevent vertical movement. Next, check the flatness of your subfloor. You can use a long, straight edge or a string. The floor should be flat to within 3 sixteenths of an inch over 10 feet and 1 eighth of an inch over 6 feet. If the subfloor is not flat, you'll need to sand or plane the high areas or fix the low areas. You can fix low spots in a couple of ways. It all depends on how you're going to install your floor. If you're going to glue down your hardwood floor, use Armstrong's S194 patch underlayment and embossing leveler to fill in those low spots. If you're going to use staples or nails, you'll need to put down number 15 builder's felt over the low spots. Don't exceed six layers. If you have severe low spots, you can bring the level up with shims or plywood. Okay, you're just about ready to install your hardwood floor. Last thing, do a final broom sweep or vacuum.